Hello, Nana here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. We are playing in the Hardcore Legacy League. It's a solo self-found Deadeye. Today, we're going to go and run Doresso's Dream. But before that, we uh, have some legacy points to... Uh, some legacy stones to equip. We've got to run with Prophecy, Invasion, and Anarchy for one map. And after that, we'll pop in a Nemesis map to make it a bit more interesting. And this is actually one that has Headhunters. So Headhunters is cool. There's a bunch of prophecies active that will pop in at various times. Like for example, Lightning Falls. Okay, the rest of done talking. So I, I had forgotten about that bit. Okay, stop trying to murder me. Thank you very much. So I've been uh, running Dried Lake for uh, a bit. I'm level 63 currently. I think I've burned through another 10 or 20 prophecies. Still uh, no upgraded Death's Harp. It's. Uh, it's a pretty rare prophecy, or I'm just being really unlucky. But either way, I'm still running around with uh, the Death's Harp as it is, rather than getting a Death's Opus. Oh, no. Also, it seems like the, the game is kind of done throwing me the easy prophecies, like, yeah, I know, you get a, a free rogue exile, or uh, the next strong box you open is going to get a nice surprise, things like that. And instead, it's no go off to this area, kill a certain thing, or it's no prophecies like this one that I have to actually go to the Malachi area to uh, read something. And slowly, your prophecy will will start to clutter up with stuff that no, I, I can't do until I advance further into the storyline. So, then of course, it becomes more difficult to cycle through things. So, because I've been, been running you know, uh, that area for quite a bit, and I noticed that oftentimes if I hit something, it would have like a sliver of health remaining. Or if I was facing uh, bosses and things, then damage would just not be very effective. Or if I went into like a corrupted side area with elemental equilibrium. So, what I've done is I've just switched to core penetration permanently. I still got lesser multiple projectiles over here. And I just ran map. Uh, uh, Dried Lake a couple times and so far yes clear speed is a bit lower but your damage is much more consistent and I do like that Let's see more items Ice Nova three rares two additional sockets and a stream of mobs so we'll just uh, get out of the way And here well even the rares are getting one hit two hits and regular mobs are simply getting one hit I think that might be the limit of the uh, area. A level up. So at 63, well, we picked up some extra points here with Prowess and Thief's Craft to get our stat points up. I managed to grab this entire chain, so we're now all the way up to Trickery. Increased crit chance, damage, but of course, this is all about the stat points. Stat points, life, stat points, all good stuff. So 2600 life, intelligence and strength, combination of the skill tree as well as a bit from items now over 120 each the goal is to have 150 each so uh, we're, we're getting there from here on out we have a couple of options we can go for face acrobatics we can quickly grab plus one or two fancy charges and four percent increased evasion the fancy charge that's a little defensive offensive mix or we can grab our life. We've got Golem's Blood over here. We have Bravery up here. Both are more life. This one also comes with more evasion, which is going to be useful. And this one makes it so that we can ignore all movement penalties on armor. As well as getting some accuracy rating, which is one of the things that currently is difficult. We don't really have that much accuracy rating. So I think taking the, the Art of the Gladiator first is going to be useful, just to see if we can get our accuracy 
over 90% again. That uh, seems like a good number to, to aim for, to just get 90% accuracy. Well, ideally you get 95%, but well, that's uh, end game, better gear, things like that. While leveling you just uh, work with the, the trash that you find. And most of the trash that you find is going to be low on accuracy. So getting it from the skill tree is just a more reliable way of getting it. Yeah, so this uh, lightning tempest is interesting in that it just starts stabbing stuff with lightning at randomly. Let's see if I can keep the deco totem up a little bit just to distract mobs from me. I do like it when the dogs don't try to chew off my legs. Well, yeah, having multiple arrows definitely useful for clear speed. But the cold penetration is just really good for single target. That's uh, definitely something that you do notice. So it's effectively it's a 30%, what are we up to? 32% more damage multiplier against stuff that doesn't have any cold resists. Oh, it, it just completely pierces boss resists effectively. Um, even elemental equilibrium, oh, which can give up to 50% uh, resistance penalties. You can just mostly shrug it off, especially if you combine it with all the other resistance penetration and uh, cursing and stuff that we already have on the tree. I have to say, we're uh, getting a decent chunk of, uh, of currency here. And there uh, is a dead end. Poo. Well, the more dead ends you hit, the less places there are where the boss can be hiding. And we found it. There's an in, uh, invasion boss here, that's why the the stuff. And a rogue exile, wow, that's uh, just everything. So we got the queen, Sunburst queen. We got Baku and we have a rogue exile. So no, those are all the, the league stones that we've added to the map. And where do they all hide? In the boss arena, of course they do. Okay, well, Ding Dong, the queen is dead. I have to say, I really don't like my life spiking like that. But on the other hand, we survived it. And for a build that only has 53%, 52% evasion chance, that's not quite bad. Uh, also, Golem. Golem gives us accuracy, therefore Golem is one of our heroes. Yeah, 89% with Golem. Without Golem, maybe miss a couple more, more times. But yeah, that was interesting. That was the kind of things that, that do give the uh, Legacy League a, uh, a good thing. Also, I believe I forgot to add a Nemesis League stone. Yeah, so we're only running with two. Invader boss and we have an, uh, an extra silver coin. One whole extra silver coin. Okay, so we actually start in a funnel that is not quite bad for just layout here. I believe we have a prophecy that we need to kill a rare mad bull, fighter bull, whatever. And then we're gonna get a guaranteed unique, so we'll see what that is. Here, bully bull bull. A reflect there, I like. Okay. Some regular dudes. Uh, and this was, of course, the fake arena. 
Uh, oh, we could actually just walk by. Or the dead end arena. It's, it was an actual arena, but it just didn't lead anywhere. <clears throat> now that we are at the portal, might as well refresh our What's pockets or want? empty our pockets. See, a lot of stuff that is simply there for chromatics. Uh, oh, not the base type you want. Six sockets gets us the seven jewelers orbs. Linked uh, RGB uh, sockets gets us chromatics. And anything useful on the ring. 70 life, that's really not bad. But uh, maybe we could craft a single resist on here, but this is just so pitiful in terms of resist that I don't even want to consider it. We can use our currency for better things. And currently down to 60 coins. So I haven't spent all 100. Oh, speaking of coins, let's pick up another two prophecies. Hello. Erased Hello. from memory. Very Seed powerful foe. Get a orb. Twice enchanted. Ooh, nice. Oh. Wait. Twice enchanted. I think I got that one already. Yeah. Hmm. Dang. Damn it. So if I want, I could run the, the cruel labyrinth twice, and then I have four enchantments that I can apply to my gloves and my boots. Yay. Look at this face. This is a happy face. I'm really not trying to force it. Oh, it, it, it is a nice enough prophecy if you care about it, and especially if you get it on Merciless. Let's just uh, get out of here. Now, if you get it on, prof uh, on, on Merciless, then also you get your helmet enchantments, and there's like a gazillion helmet enchantments, and like 1% of the gazillion is actually relevant for your build. So no more more opportunities just means you don't have to learn, run the labyrinth as often. But most of the time, if you're playing through, then no, the enchantment is gonna stay on for what, five levels, 10 levels? Then you usually level out of the boots. That's my experience. <coughs> Well, yeah, it's though then the choice is to either seal it or uh, burn it. The uh, thing is, though, uh, I've been, been running the uh, oh, Trite Lake as, because it's just an easy area to, to run. So, well, if you're gonna try to burn some prophecies on, on general areas, might as well use Trite Lake for it or whatever other area you like. And no, Nightwane is there, so that that's kind of the reason I wanted to go there. Nothing interesting. But with prophecies, if there's prophecies you don't want, then of course what you can do is just no, take off your leak stones, go into an area and wait for the, the prophecy to trigger. And then you go out and then you get a new prophecy. Now for all prophecies that apply to an area rather than to uh, that trigger based on an event, that works fine. No, like tempests, uh, spawning, things like that. It would just, just open up new instances of areas and at some point the Tempest is going to spawn. And then you can move on. If you don't want to do the Tempest, that's an easy way to burn it. And it saves you the three or four uh, silver coins that it would otherwise cost you to uh, seal away a prophecy. Some of the areas that no, either require you to... I had one that I had to go back to Act 1 to touch the... Uh, the book in the prison, the Chevron's Diary. That's uh, in that area where just before you have to fight with Brutus, where piety is taunting you. She's standing next to a book. Well, you have to, to read that book. And that's the first part of a, of a chain of events. So I figured, yeah, okay, let's go back, do that. But now, if there's things that are not part of events, uh, chains, or those tied to like specific uniques that you don't have, things like that, fated uniques. Then those you either have to, to seal or you have to go out of your way to, to do them. Okay, there we are. But I haven't really I've, I've tried to prefer to not seal uh, prophecies where possible. Just because now if you're paying three coins for uh, to seal a prophecy. You could have also had three new uh, opportunities to roll 
the prophecy you wanted to upgrade the Devs Harp to Devs Opus. Wow. So far, our damage is still pretty good, so it's not like we need Devs Opus. It's just a really, really nice to have item. Hey, hello there, Tiltsinger. You used to be a regular mob in the Northern Forest, and now you are an invadable. Cool. Also, we haven't encountered him yet. That's also nice. And we got a silver coin. Now we got a, a unique item. Let's have a look at that as well. It is Honor, Honor Home. Honor Home. Yeah. Lightning damage to attacks, armor and energy shields, elemental resists, more ele elemental resists when on low on life, and reduce amount of cost of skills when on low life. So this is for an armor, energy shield, low life build, I would assume. Cool. Ooh, whatever works, I guess. I don't think I've actually played a, a low life build before, so not quite sure if this is useful or not. Hello there. So, so let's curse you. Also, just get out of my face, please. Yeah, oh yeah. Cost the clouds, chaos damage. Uh, chaos damage hurts a lot because, well, we uh, don't particularly deal, deal well with chaos damage. So, I think we might have killed one of the dudes because they're all getting angry and starting to use vile skills. Oh yeah, we killed the uh, Unix. Now, let's go back for the rewards. Still have to find that unique fighting bull, or that rare fighting bull. I think we might actually have a, an unlucky roll, and I might need to redo this area just to get him. Also, someone killed my golem again, buggers. Now there is an argument to be made to put uh, the golem on your castman damage taken setup. Problem is you're gonna remain with a low level golem that way. So it's really gonna die a lot. And of course the bonus is not gonna get very high either. But given that my castman damage taken setup is already maxed out in terms of links, then... No, I just have to cast the golem by hand. Okay. Let's see, we have Copen up, so there we are basically ready for a boss fight. Let's see if this fight is gonna be much more difficult compared to normal. Let's see if we can at least get some, uh, some frenzy up. Okay, and we're just free locking him. This, I, I like this. <laughs> Look at this. First time he's actually uh, sitting down to, to recover. We took him down to a third of his life because he was just freeze locked for the entirety of the, of the, of the thing. I, I'd say we're off to a pretty good start. <laughs> Okay, second time. Yeah. Have yourself a decoy totem. Okay, he's now yeah, final final stretch. Yeah. We got him. So staying in the middle of those uh, of that, that statue storm might not have been the best thing. I did drink my Stip Knight there, but as you see, I did get hit. I suppose that was actually more a spell rather than an attack. But no, nope, sipping some uh, some panic flasks, some bubbling flasks. There is instant healing in here. It got me through. But I probably should have sidestepped, even though I was getting close and I was just smelling blood. And that, that's a weakness. If I died in a boss fight where I'm being cautious most of the time, if the boss is down to like 5% of his health, I might get reckless and I just want to go for the kill even when 
it is just the smart thing to do to not go for the kill and actually sidestep the attack and just uh, spend five or ten more minutes or seconds even in order to get that kill. But with that, we have murdered Doresso. We have the, uh, the Eye of Desire. And Lady Diana is happy. So we are now drilling a hole into the belly of the beast. Uh, and next episode we're gonna go after Malachi. But for now, no. If you complete both dreams, then of course you complete the reward part of the of the quest. And you can actually get your skills, which is pretty darn useful. So Interesting, hypothermia is a more multiplier against chilled enemies, which is not uh, expensive. So in, in most of my theory crafting, I've actually been ignoring this one. Chance to freeze enemies which are chilled is pretty cool, but the more damage uh, against chilled enemies, so we do cold damage, so we're chilling stuff, and it's, I think, about three times easier to chill something than it is to freeze them. And we were even no, effectively freeze-locking the rest so so maybe, maybe something like a hypothermia in the build could be interesting on the other hand for the same level weapon elemental damage is a 54 percent more multiplier while this is only a 20 uh, 27 percent more multiplier so it's half as effective as uh, weapon elemental damage it's probably on par with a, a slow projectiles so now, if you're considering slow projectiles for your attack, you might want to look at hypothermia um, to see how good it is. I'm actually going to bring it along and just put it in a stash. And then, now if you ever get a 5 or a 6 link, then well, we have to consider what else we're going to link in. Then, no, hypothermia might not even be a bad idea. On the other hand, yeah, more physical projectile, that's... And less attack speed. This is they all, all have downsides. This one only has upsides. That's why I like it. Even though it might not be the most powerful thing in the world. But for now, we have completed this part of the journey. I'm gonna stack up on some more prophecies here. The wealthy exile. Excellent. I think more Dried Lake is gonna be in my future. And I'll report back when we are gonna go after Malachi. And oh, We'll see about that. So for now, I'm going to thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.